Hi, I'm back here again in Google Sheets and in this video I'm going to be talking about the invoicing aspect of my Google Sheets CRM system and this involves three separate sheets. We have the main invoice sheet where we're filling out and creating invoices. We have an invoice history sheet where we're recording all of the information about previous invoices and we also have a prices and rates sheet where we're keeping details about the goods and services that we're providing. I'll start here because this is quite a simple sheet. There's really nothing going on here. I have the same style header with six frozen rows as most of my other sheets. And I have columns for various data about the goods and services that I'm providing. I have columns for code and also for description, but both of those are optional. Really the only things that matter here are the item name and the rate or price. As always, um, you're free to modify this to show other kinds of data about the products and services that you supply, but what we have here should be good enough for my demonstration. The next sheet is an invoice creation sheet. This is where we can come to build invoices uh, and automatically generate a PDF copy of them to send to our customers. So there are three main areas to this sheet. In the top left hand corner there's space for you to add details about your company uh, such as your address, contact details, as well as uh, payment methods whether that be a direct deposit or some other method. In the top right hand corner we have an area for our customers data and all we really need to change here is the customer name and we have a field for data validation here which is pulling customer names from our client list sheet and we can simply select a name from the drop-down and the relevant data will automatically be populated into these fields here. We also have an invoice number field which is automatically updated from our invoice history sheet and we also have a date field. The date field isn't automatically updated uh, although you could quite easily do that. Um, I tend to leave it uh, static so that it can be changed as needed uh, rather than always having today's date, which is more than likely not going to be the day that the actual work was carried out, we can choose a relevant date from this drop down here instead. The third area is the main body of the invoice, where we can define things like the item in question, uh, the charge, the quantity supplied, and we also have a column for line total which is automatically populated when a quantity is given. At the bottom of the invoice we have an area for a trade discount so we can apply one here if we want to. We also have a field for uh, total paid so we have um, space to put in a deposit if a deposit was paid and that's automatically subtracted from the total due. All of these automatically updated fields are quite straightforward. In our charge column we have a simple VLOOKUP to our prices and rates sheet where we're looking for this value somewhere on that sheet and then returning the fourth column which just happens to be the, uh, the price column and dropping it into this cell here. We have a column for quantity which is simply um, a user entered number uh, and that affects what we get in the line total which is quite simple, it's simply the charge multiplied by the quantity. And in the total due column, we have a sum of everything in the line total column, minus the discount, and minus the total paid. To this, you might like to add individual line discounts, if you were discounting just individual products or services, but I haven't had a need to add that yet. We also have a field for description here, which has a formula in it, very similar to our charge column, which is looking up data on our prices and rates sheet. So let's take a look at that guy. We have a description field here, which, like I said, is optional, uh, and it might only be applicable for certain kinds of products. So let's, um, let's put one of these products in here. And we can see that that description is updated. But if you have a service in here, then you're not likely to have a static description for that service. You might like to add your own custom uh, description to that field.
Now having done that, we've overwritten the formula that was in that cell. Uh, there's no longer a formula in there, but I'll come back to that in just a moment. Once you're happy with all of the data that you've generated here, you can go ahead and press the print button and an invoice will automatically be generated and all of the fields in this sheet will be blanked. So there we go, we've lost all of the data in the sheets here and we're ready to do another invoice. However, if I take a look at this first description cell where I had written my custom description, you can see that my formula is back in this cell ready to go again if need be. We also have an updated invoice number and taking a look at my invoice history sheet, you can see that that invoice that I've just processed has a line here so we can see the company name, uh, the status, whether it's paid or unpaid, the total due, as well as uh, the number of days since the work was carried out. That's all very useful information. And of course, we also have a PDF which was automatically created, so I'll pull that up now. And this is my invoice, which was automatically dropped into the specified folder with all of the relevant data on there. This document itself has also been shared and a copy of the sharing link as well as a copy of the PDF itself have both been attached to an email which has been forwarded automatically to my email address. So I can then review that and if I'm happy with it, I can forward it to my customer. They can then access either the attached PDF or they can follow the link in the email uh, and arrive at this document here in my Google Drive. So that's a very quick and easy way of generating invoices where your customer has a couple of different ways of getting access to it. And now I'll take a look at the script which makes all of this work. So I've got my script editor open up the top here and I have a new script file called invoice to PDF. And I'm not going to go through all of this bit by bit because there's quite a bit there. Uh, suffice to say that we have a single function called submit invoice which is the function that's being called when I press my print button. This guy here. And that's doing three things. First, it's making a PDF. Second, it's adding a line to my invoice history. And third, it's clearing all of my invoice fields ready for new input. Uh, and as you like, you can add to this or comment these out if you don't necessarily want to do that particular thing. The function to make history uh, is going to look pretty familiar to you if you've seen my other videos. Uh, it's doing effectively the same thing that we've been doing with a lot of our data, simply getting a range and then setting a value. If you're not completely up to speed on that, then I recommend checking out one of my previous videos where I do talk about that. And similarly, we're clearing the invoice fields uh, in a way that we've done uh, several times before. There's nothing terribly complicated going on here. However, right at the end of this function, you can see that we have a little for loop, which is going to run about 19 times. And what it's doing is setting the formula that we have in that description cell back to what it should be. So that's uh, this combination of strings and mathematics, simply entering that as a formula for that cell. This way we can overwrite our description formula as much as we like with our custom descriptions. And it's always going to come back after we submit the invoice. Back up here in function make PDF, we're doing quite a few things that you might not have worked with before. For most of the methods that you see here, I highly recommend that you check out Google's documentation on how these work and what they do, as that's going to do a much better job of explaining them than I can do here. When building this for yourself, you'll need to specify your own folder ID. This is my own folder ID, which my invoices are saved to. But when building this for yourself, you'll need to track down what your own folder ID is. And in order to do that, you can simply open up your Google Drive, locate the directory that you want your uh, invoices to land in, right click and go to get shareable link. And the link that's provided here will have an ID number in it. And this is what you need to extract and punch into your script in order for that to work. Quite straightforward and easy to do. I've also removed the section of this script which automatically generates an email 
uh, with this attachment. However, it's relatively simple. So I'm going to supply detailed instructions on how to take that code and modify it for yourself because a lot of it is going to be dependent on your own environment uh, whereas my copy of that code is going to be very specific to me. So at the end of this series I'll be providing all of that code um, along with the chunk to send emails uh, and heavily documented so that you understand how to make that work for you. Now coming back to my spreadsheet and taking a look at our invoice history we do have three invoices here already which are unpaid and we can take a look at the individual customer sheets for these people and see what's going on there. So for Red Sun Holdings we can see that we have an outstanding invoice just one of them and we have a total unpaid amount here we have the invoice number in question and the amount owed. This is a handy way of giving you an overview of the total that's outstanding as well as all of the individual invoices so that when your invoice history um, sheet fills up you can easily make sense of the data that you're seeing there. And returning to our main client list we can also see that our paid up column now has some data in there and none of these customers are yet paid up however if we pay off say this invoice First of all, the customer data sheet for Red Sun Holdings is going to be listed as fully paid now. And our main client list is going to show that this customer is paid. So again, a very easy and uh, straightforward way of understanding uh, what invoices have been paid and have not, and which customers are and are not paid up. Now if we take a look at the paid up column, we have a bit of a weird looking formula with something called indirect in the formula. And I'll try to explain what's happening here. First of all, we have an if error to catch any errors. So if something wacky is going on here, it's not going to give us an error. It's just not going to display any information. Uh, the second thing it's doing is we have an if, which is looking up A7. That's uh, this guy over here. Um, and if A7 does not contain any data, then it simply returns an empty string. That's the first argument of my if statement. If A7 does contain data, then we're doing this part of the function. And here we have another if statement with an indirect. And an indirect is just a way of referencing um, a cell as a string. So uh, effectively you're taking the data um, or the value that's in that cell um, and using it as part of your formula. So you can kind of think about this as creating another little formula within your formula. And having highlighted this string here, we can see what the actual output is. The output is Red Sun Holdings in single quotations, and then an A1 notation of a cell. And what is this? Well, this is simply a reference to a cell in another sheet. So I'll escape from here, take a look at Red Sun Holdings, and we're looking at Q6. So that's the first cell in my unpaid invoices panel, which is currently blank. And according to this formula, if that cell is equal to a blank string, then we have the word yes inserted in that cell. And if it's not equal to an empty string, then we have that cell populated with no. So using this formula, we're conditionally locating a cell on another sheet and then returning its value, whether it be blank or not. And then we're simply using conditional formatting to display that cell in a particular color. So if the text equals yes, then the cell is green. And if the text equals no, then the cell is red. So indirect is a good way of referencing a cell on another sheet where you can't really specify what the sheet name is, but you can get the sheet name from somewhere else on the sheet, uh, namely this cell here. And we're using that indirect reference to take a look at the unpaid invoices, which uh, as I explained in the previous video, I have made um, an entire video just dedicated to this one array formula and how it does what it does. So I'll link that in the description and you can check it out there if you do need to understand how that works. 
But because this array formula is not turning up any unpaid invoices for this customer, then our cell is blank and consequently we get a yes in our paid up column. Okay, so that's invoices in a nutshell. The next video in the series should hopefully be the last video and in that one I'm going to be talking about security on your sheet both in terms of protecting ranges in sheets and also understanding how to safely share files and folders in your Google Drive uh, where it's appropriate so that people who need access to certain documents or sheets on your spreadsheets uh, can get access to that data um, without compromising any of the other data that you have in your Google Drive or in your spreadsheet. I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.